Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the 2024 election and specifically what it means for the trading community, for markets, and how it might impact you on the charts. Now, as we get into this video, I wanna give you a bit of a disclosure. This is a topic that I don't love discussing, but I do know that it is very important to markets and to traders, and so we're going to be diving into this. This is going to be my best guess as to what I think could happen depending on who becomes the president and whether or not it really does impact the markets for you and I as active traders. Now, currently at the time of recording this video, which is October 15th, 2024, uh, this is the latest betting odds that I could find on predictit.org. You can find this for yourself if you'd like to go look. Now, real quick, as we get into this, recently we have seen uh, in the last 90 days, a pretty big shift back and forth. But where we are currently, you can see there's a pretty dang close call on who is going to potentially win the election according to the betting market. Now, why do we care about the betting market? Well, Historically, the betting market is pretty accurate at picking the president. But with it being so close here with just a short while to go before election uh, day, it is really quite a close call. And so as trading participants in the markets, how can we adjust and be ready for whatever happens here? And as we get started with today's video, today's video sponsor is Vantage. Vantage Markets allows traders to trade all sorts of different things all in one single broker. Unfortunately, it's not available to US traders, but if you're outside of the US, this is a broker that has pretty much everything. You can trade CF FDs, you can trade Forex, you can trade crypto, all sorts of different things, all in one broker. So as we go into this trading volatile period, uh, it may be worth checking out Vantage. And there is a link down below in the description if you'd like to check them out. It is a referral link and you'll be supporting my page if you choose to use it. Last thing I'll say is they do offer a pretty generous welcome bonus to people who sign up using my link. So check it out if you're interested. So if you're navigating social media in the last few months, uh, you've probably seen heated comment sections talking about what's going to happen if Trump wins or if Harris wins and the world's going to go to, you know, H-E double hockey sticks if so-and-so wins. And you get this every election cycle. People get very up in arms about this stuff and understandably so. There are some controversial topics, people have their opinions, and there are a lot of things that uh, people just feel very strongly about. It's very understandable. And again, I want to make the point here that this video is not my personal opinion on who I think is the better candidate or whatever, uh, but rather what I think each scenario could present to the markets. And, you know, newsflash, I don't think that the markets are going to crash if one wins or the other wins. In fact, I think it's important that we start out by taking a look at some of the similarities depending on who wins between the two. So if you get Trump, you get Harris, what are the similarities? What is the market sort of uh, able to rely on regardless of the outcome? Well, here's my opinion and my best guess on what this could be. I think both candidates, whether you get Trump or you get Harris, are likely to spend big. Uh, politicians, presidents, they have a tendency to spend a lot of money to sort of try and get things done. And it's understandable if you're the president, you want to get things done, it's going to cost you that money and that taxpayer money goes towards, you know, funding these projects and attempts to, you know, improve things. I do also want to just mention that I do think that both Harris and Trump, just from a, um, you know, perspective that I have, do want what's best in mind for the country. They have very different approaches and people feel very differently on on each candidate and that is totally okay but i will say that i think that both are looking to you know achieve their goal of improving the economy for people achieve their goal of improving the scenario uh, so we'll see another thing that i want to mention is that uh the presidency is important but so is the legislative branch uh congress if the president wins and their party also has the legislative branch branch they have a lot more power and i actually think the markets would not like this regardless of whether or not you think one of these two is better than the other if one president has the power of also the of congress as well it will scare the markets because people will be like, oh, so we're gonna see lots of change. And if there's one thing, regardless of the president that the market actually does not like, it's change and uncertainty. So most likely, a positive scenario would actually be a split uh, Congress and president. And that that is, historically speaking, generally what markets like to see the best. They like to see a balance of power to a degree and not just a, a very strong you know, president and legislative branch that can get a ton of changes enacted. And, and again, uh, that's just from an uncertainty standpoint, if you know somebody has way more ability to make changes, it's gonna be a bit more um, impactful. 
Next thing I'll say is that the economy is largely impacted by corporate America and the Fed. So don't overvalue the presidency too much. Yes, it does matter, but the Fed, what they do, the chairman, as well as his team, um, as well as just corporate America and trends that are happening, like the AI run, is that gonna keep going? Those are bigger questions to ask as well. So again, although this is an important topic, please understand there are other forces that I would argue are far more powerful. So getting into it first, let's talk about a Trump victory. What would this mean? What would the pros and cons be? What are the risks? Well, uh, the pretty obvious one is that this would keep taxes lower for businesses, which could be argued as a pro-business move and uh, could like uh, likely cause the stock market in the short run to celebrate those you know uh, tax worries not being a thing. The other thing that would be positive would be deregulation. And what I mean by that is that when things are more regulated, um, it restricts business activity. When things are less regulated, it allows them to go more freely. And uh, Generally speaking, deregulation uh, may allow businesses to kind of make bigger profits and other people might argue, well, yes, at the cost of hurting the little guy, so on and so forth. Again, we're not here to debate the controversies here. I'm just telling you from a logical perspective, the best I can, where I think this would do to the markets. However, larger spending could mean interest rates stay elevated with higher inflation. Uh, Trump in his last presidency, presidency spent a lot of money. So did Harris and Biden. So. We go back to the things that common between the two. I think both are going to spend a lot of money, regardless of who wins. Uh, there is also this concept of U.S. tariffs, and tariffs are super controversial. Uh, economists themselves can't really deem exactly whether or not they think it will be inflationary or not by taxing incoming or imported goods uh, more aggressively. Could that cause prices to rise domestically? It is possible. Um, so that that is a risk, right? A risk is tariffs could cause inflation, essentially. Tighter trade restrictions could also help domestic small cap companies, though. So for small cap or smaller companies in the U.S., manufacturing could pick up in the U.S. itself, which could be arguably a good thing for those domestic companies. Uh, however, there is a big thing with Trump, and we saw this in 2018, which is his uncertainty. Whether you like him or not, Donald Trump is a character, right? People, he's not predictable. He's not He's not um, somebody that you can just kind of like, okay, we know what to expect of them. He flies off the handle pretty frequently. And, uh, you know, up for debate whether or not you think that that's right or wrong for the president. Regardless, he's not a standard politician. We can all probably agree on that. Uh, and, you know, for the purpose of markets, again, people get a little uncertain with, with uh, or they don't love uncertainty in the markets. In 2018, with the trade war, uh, that really scared the market. We saw a big correction in the stock market during that, that time, during his administration. Let's get on to a Harris victory. So what would this mean? Higher taxes for businesses, which could cause initial drop. Again, higher taxes can cut into the profitability of it. And more regulation could also be restrictive for some innovative parts of the market, right? If you, uh, you know, regulation can be good in one hand, because it can, of course, look out for people who, you know, on the lower end of the, uh, you know, may not be benefiting from these massive corporate profits, uh, but that can also act to bottleneck or restrict some of the innovative parts of the economy and part of our, you know, thing of being America's innovation, right? Designing the greatest, you know, latest, greatest thing. Um, larger spending could mean interest rates stay elevated with higher inflation. Same point that we made on the previous slide with Donald Trump. Uh, again, higher interest rates could be a byproduct of high fiscal spending from the government. Um, less restrictive tariffs could be perceived as better for international trade. So, if trade is less restrictive, more free, you know, free trading internationally, and we don't put tariffs so much on things, it could be arguably good for international trade. And that would benefit some of the big companies like large cap companies that do a lot of international trade. If you add in restrictions to that flow of traffic, it could be damaging. So uh, this would be, of course, a positive thing for many companies that do a lot of international business. The S&P 500 is super full of international businesses. Um, which could benefit off of uh, Harris becoming the president and that fear of the tariff situation you know, not being as much of a thing. Um, that being said, the last one is more predictable. And, and again, this is, uh, I, I think most of us, whether you like Trump, like Harris, whatever, probably agreeable that uh, the prediction here of this, uh, of a more standard politician, I would say, versus um, Donald Trump, which is very un unorthodox, uh, 
is, is fair to point out. So now let's take a moment to look at what this could do to markets. Now, the first chart I wanted to talk about is the euro versus the dollar. And this is a great way just to look at the dollar's overall strength. Uh, now, regardless of whether or not you get uh, Harris or Trump, I do think that the most likely outcome uh, is going to be impacted primarily by the state of the economy and where interest rates are with the Fed. And if fiscal spending is going to likely be high amongst either president, I do think that most likely interest rates will come down maybe a little bit, but they might not crash down to where they were prior to all of this you know, pandemic stuff. That being said, I think that there is a floor to where interest rates will go. And if that is the case, likely the dollar will stay strong. And as long as we have, you know, pretty strong innovation out of the United States and the economy continues to grow, I actually would not be surprised if the euro specifically continued to see downside move in the coming, you know, months, regardless of which candidate becomes the president. Next, we'll talk about Bitcoin. And up until today, I actually would have said that uh, Bitcoin probably would do just really well under uh, Trump because of his less regulatory stance. That being said, there was some news that came out here that was a little bit more uh, positive from the Harris administration. So I actually think that regardless here, Bitcoin actually may uh, see a potential breakout into 2025. And it's an area of the market that I actually think has a lot of opportunity, especially if you continue to see strength, innovation, and a rebounding economy in the United States. Uh, some of the more risk on assets like Bitcoin could see some upside. That being said, if I had to take a pick, I would say most likely the Trump campaign with lower regulation uh, sort of uh, mandates, as well as their positive comments on the cryptocurrency space uh, would be a bullish thing for Bitcoin. So this could be a market that, you know, either tops out on uh, perhaps a Harris campaign uh, winning or a victory for the Harris campaign, or uh, if Trump does win, uh, perhaps there is some more upside for the crypto crowd to celebrate. Let's now take a look at the S&P 500, which has been on a straight shot to the upside here in the last two years. We've had a really, really strong rebound from the sell-off that we saw in 2022. And uh, before you, you know, celebrate one way or the other for which candidate did which, uh, you know, we saw a really, really steep correction in 2022. Too, and then we've seen a rebound. All of this has happened under the uh, Biden and Harris administration. So we've seen a really good stock market performance overall with some tough times in the middle there. That being said, under Trump, we also saw a very, very strong stock market. So I don't really think that either candidate really can claim total you know, dominance here. Regardless, both of them, between the two of them, we've had some really good environments for stocks in the last few years. So, you know, perhaps either way, it's set to continue. But again, it kind of goes back to what we said at the beginning of this video. It's more up to the Fed, the state of the economy, and trends in corporate America that will continue this trend more so, I think, than just what the president is. That being said, um, I actually am going to go ahead and say this is completely neutral. I don't think that in terms of stock market land, there will be a massive reaction to to um, the bearish side for either candidate. In fact, I think most likely post-election, uh, I think that the trend continues to the upside just because now we have that uncertainty out of the bag, whether it be Harris or Trump. So from my perspective, um, dips are opportunities to buy, uh, you know, of course, not financial advice. This is just what I'm doing. Uh, and I, I think that we have, uh, regardless of the outcome, uh, a, you know, continuation of what we've seen until something changes more specifically in the economy, inflation story, et cetera. Now, we can talk a little bit about gold, which I think has been trending up for a good chunk of this year simply because of the uncertainty regarding the Middle East as well as the election. We've talked about that a lot on my channel, just about how important, you know, that uncertainty factor is in, in you know, gold's price action. I actually think that leading up to the election, we'll continue to see this trend, which has played out, which has been a dominant uptrend for gold this year on that uncertainty. But what I'd watch out for is reversals, regardless of which president wins, just simply because now the, the uncertainty is mostly behind us. So it is one of those things by the rumor, sell the news, in my opinion, on gold. And I will be looking actually for reversals or corrective periods in gold, perhaps going into 2025, once we get past the uncertainty of who's going to win the election. That being said, on the longer term basis, I do think that pullbacks in gold might still be opportunities, as it is pretty much expected, regardless of who wins the presidency, that 
there will still be tons of money printing and spending from the U.S. government. Uh, and again, I don't think that one president over the other has a huge uh, likelihood of outspending the other. They'll probably both spend a ton of money regardless of who wins. Uh, we have examples from both of them in their presidencies. Both spent a ton of money. So I hope this was helpful to you overall and getting you ready for what could be a very volatile time. I do think that one thing is for certain, there's likely to be some big movements in either direction with the coming weeks going into the election and probably to follow afterwards. Thank you for watching. And before we end this video, let me just remind you that if you'd like to check out Vantage Markets, the link down below in the description will get you a nice sign up bonus if you decide to check them out and make a deposit. So again, great brokerage for traders outside of the US to consider. They offer everything from CFDs to Forex to cryptocurrency, everything under one brokerage, which is super convenient. And best part, you can actually trade it directly on tradingview.com, meaning you can place live trades directly from within your trading view. Thanks for watching this video. And on the screen right now, you'll see some other options of other videos we put together that might be helpful to you in your trading career. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.